Hurricane Fiona, now a Category 2 hurricane with 100 mile an hour winds and continuing to intensify as it moves off of Hispaniola. What could this mean for the Turks and Caicos Islands and how significant could the impacts be for those islands, including for Bermuda? Hello everyone, it's Weather United here and welcome back. Before I do get started, please consider subscribing if you're new. Also hit that bell notification icon and share this video with your family and friends and leave a like on this video. Taking a latest look here at our Mesosector 1 satellite imagery on Hurricane Fiona that is now a powerful Category 2 hurricane with winds up to 100 miles an hour and we can see why that is. Very, very organized structure here on the satellite imagery with a very dense compact CDO with an eye that is trying to peek out, kind of cloud filled at this time but you can even see some of the low level clouds there briefly spinning rapidly an indication that Fiona is beginning to really intensify at a fairly quick rate when we take a look at our IR satellite imagery, we're also taking, uh, noticing that the symmetrical or symmetry of the CDO is becoming better defined with colder cloud tops, which indicates that Fiona is also beginning to strengthen given those hot towers that are more deeper. On the National Hurricane Center track, we could see that this is expected to now become a Category 4 hurricane with 130 mile an hour winds in the next two to three days. Yes, that is not very long from now, and we could be dealing with a major hurricane even sooner than that, as you can see. So by Tuesday afternoon, major hurricane near the Turks and Caicos Islands. Hurricane warnings are now posted for that area, so you need to take action immediately. Tropical storm force winds there, in fact, are arriving right now on some of those islands. So you need to make sure you're prepared because I can only do so much if you uh, help, help me out here. All right. And then of course, it's going to be in Bermuda as a major hurricane with winds right now at 115 to 125 miles an hour. It's going to weaken as it passes by Bermuda, but that south eastern quadrant wind field could be very, very intense over the small island of Bermuda. And that's why we're going to still talk about this for a couple more days, I believe, because of how strong this is going to be when it hits Bermuda and then eventually in the Canadian Maritimes, eventually by Saturday. Here's a look at the probability of tropical storm force winds. This has not updated I'm hoping they'll update it soon, but as of right now, Bermuda has a, an 80 to 90% chance of tropical storm force winds in the next three to five days, with a 100% chance of tropical storm force winds on some of the Turks and Caicos Islands in that five-day period, with a 40 to 60% chance of hurricane force winds on the Turks and Caicos Islands, with a 30 to 40% chance of hurricane force winds on Bermuda. This is not major hurricane probabilities. This is just hurricane winds that are greater than 74 miles an hour. So keep that in mind that, that while the chances are still low on Bermuda, those chances will be increasing in days to come. So now when we take a look at our key messages from Hurricane uh, Fiona, Heavy rains from the trailing bands of Fiona will continue to cross Puerto Rico through this evening and cross the Eastern Dominican Republic through tonight. These rains could produce more life-threatening and catastrophic flooding along with mudslides and landslides across Puerto Rico and the eastern portions of the Dominican Republic tonight. Hurricane conditions are expected now over the Turks and Caicos Islands with tropical storm conditions likely over the southeastern Bahamas, actually possible over the Bahamas beginning late tonight or early Tuesday. So again, you really need to take this uh, very seriously, okay? Interest in the Bermuda uh, should definitely monitor the progress of Fiona as, again, there could be tropical storm watches, warnings, or hurricane watches and warnings issued in the next couple of days. So definitely stay tuned on this channel for the latest update for where you're at as far as Hurricane Fiona is. Okay, so now we're going to transition and take a look here at our GFS model because we have not only one area that we're watching, that's of course Fiona, that's our entity. She's intense, she's gonna strengthen even further, but we also have another area to watch that is approaching the southern leeward, uh, southern windward islands, like Trinidad and Tobago, uh, Barbuda, 
um, St. Nitz and Nevis. These areas definitely need to watch for another disturbance that is going to cross over your area in the next two to four days. And that could become our next area of concern down the road. But we're really not going to spend a lot of time on that or else this video will end up being like 25 or 30 minutes long. Okay, so by this afternoon, we have 982 millibars on the GFS, but of course, it's stronger than that. If we take a look actually at the National Hurricane Center at our public advisory, air pressure is down at 972 millibars already. So we know it is stronger. And in fact, they just issued a new update. So the government of the Dominican Republic has now discontinued the tropical storm warnings. So that's just a new update. But right now, 972 millibars and the GFS literally is kind of underestimating this at 982 millibars. So it's 10 millibars weaker than what the NHC is saying, which I strongly believe the NHC because of that eye that we're seeing. So by tomorrow uh, afternoon, 36 hours out, again, assuming that the system is 10 millibars stronger, it could be as low as 957 millibars in 36 hours. And then in 48 hours, it could be as low as 949 millibars. Okay, so just keep that in mind. And then it could bottom out here at maybe even 936 to 946 millibars in 66 hours on the approach of Bermuda. And man, that gets very, very close to Bermuda. In fact, so close that there could be hurricane force winds on the island of Bermuda. And another way we can see this is on um, the H uh, wharf model that I always like to bring up so we can see. If we go back here right now, even so, this afternoon, Fiona is stronger than what the H wharf is actually showing. So, again, 972 millibars. This is very concerning, and I don't like using the word concerning so much, but it is something that we have to really watch closely because this is expected to intensify further to 950, 940 millibars in about 66 hours, and then might get even down there to the low 940 millibar range as it approaches Bermuda and where's Bermuda on this man it's small there's Bermuda right there with again um, possibly hurricane force winds in 90 hours so keep that in mind and not to mention if we go back here and look at the Turks and Caicos Islands my internet likes to run slow so sorry about that we can see uh, near tropical storm force winds, might even see hurricane force winds. This could be an outlier model because of the hurricane warnings that are actually issued. If we take a look at another model, you can see tropical storm force winds are there on the island. And this looks to be a realistic scenario on the HMON model that also indicates that the pressure could drop down in 935 millibars and it again impact Bermuda as a major hurricane. So yeah, it's not looking very good at all, unfortunately, for that area. All right, so we're now going to take a look here at our windy.com because waves are going to be a serious, serious big issue with this. It's not just the wind. It's not going to just be the rain. It's going to be the a uh, high surf that is anticipated. So we can see on some of the Turks and Caicos Islands here, like, um, let's see here, Cockburn Harbor, Cockburn Town, wave heights up to about uh, 10 to 15 feet there with those tropical storm force winds. But take note of this, as we go forward, now that this is going to strengthen pretty significantly, we can see um, even 15 foot uh, surf here along the rest of the Turks and Caicos and Bahamas that could see 10 foot waves out of Fiona. And then of course, let's go over um, Bermuda because uh, again, we, we do care about you all that live there. Hamilton, Somerset, St. George's. Let's kind of go through this um, fairly quickly. You can see waves are going to increase uh, throughout the day on Thursday into Thursday night. And then really build, look at this, getting really high by early Friday morning uh, with wave heights of maybe 20 to 30 feet. And then getting even higher than that could approach maybe 50 feet high on some of the south way, uh, southwesting facing beaches, which could be pretty significant, could be catastrophic, potentially seeing waves that high. And that's because, again, how strong Fiona will actually be when it approaches Bermuda. So if you don't get hurricane force winds, you're certainly going to get high surf. Wave heights 30 to 50 feet, maybe some breakers approaching 60 feet perhaps. 
that would be devastating for um, Hamilton in Bermuda, okay? So a lot of people like to visit there, but you may need to kind of put off your visiting or visitation there in Bermuda until the storm passes, because after that, surf should subside gradually, but still remain 10 to 20 feet high through at least Saturday. Now, I'm gonna briefly, just briefly talk about disturbance number two, as that is now a threat to the southern windward islands like Trinidad and Tobago, Barbuda, St. Nits and Nevis, even for Dominica and Martinique Islands there in the Eastern Caribbean. This has a 20% chance of tropical development in the next five days, and we can see this from the GFS model that has been a little consistent at showing potentially our next named storm. Now, I'm not gonna get ahead of myself. This is very, very uncertain to everybody. So what you see here is probably take it with a grain of salt. It's likely to not happen as of right now until we get more accurate model data in to this, okay? So we can see in the next uh, three days, um, this is our disturbance that we're watching right here in the southern windward island, or uh, yeah, windward islands. That's Trinidad and Tobago could bring in some moderate to heavy rainfall, more rain on the way for those islands. And then by the time we go into day five, we can see possible a high-end tropical depression or a low-end tropical storm but again I am not placing bets on this at all just because it has not even formed and congealed into anything significant yet so please take this with a grain of salt and I'm only going out to five days with this for that given reason if you found this weather information very helpful make sure you smash the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any of my future updates but anyways I will see you in the next one. Peace.